Ευλογημένη η Βασιλεία του Πατρός και του Υιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος, νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Χριστός ανέστη εκ νεκρών, θανάτο, θανάτον πατήσας και της εν της μνημάσι ζωήν χαρισάμενος. Christ is risen from the dead by death trampling down upon death and to those in the tombs he has granted life Christos Anesti In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our Archbishop and Father, Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth in temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffer, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages.
κέτι εν ειρήνη του Κυρίου Θεϊτόμεν. Αντιλαβούσον ελέησον και διαφύλαξον ημάς ο Θεός της συγχαρητή. Σπαναγία σαγράντου υπερβλογημένης εν δόξου, δεσποινής ημών Θεοτόκου και η Παρθένου Μαρίας, με τα πάντων των Αγίου μνημονεύσαντες, εαυτούς και αλλήλους, και πάσαν τη ζωή ημών, Χριστό το Θεό παραθώμεθα. Ότι σών το κράτος και σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμης και η δόξα του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος, νυν και αι και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Yes. 
of darkness all the heavenly power shouted O giver of life Christ, Christ our God glory to you when he took down your immaculate body from the cross the honorable Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen shroud with spices and laid it for burial in a new tomb but on the third day you arose, O Lord, and granted the world your great mercy. The angel standing at the sepulcher cried out and said to the ointment bearing women, The ointments are appropriate for mortal men, but Christ has shown a stranger to the king. So go and cry aloud, the Lord has risen and has granted the world his great mercy. Christon ton chirion, anikti episcepsaton, anayeni sinanoxen, egvidakfis ematistepsen. Ostia crimenos apostolos, eftartos diefoni, prosfaris eus ce grammatis, ton sotira dio condas, o necron cathile nectus tabru, mirati ta fie negoin, nicodimos, Together, please, with our choir, on page three of your bulletin, the hymn of our church.
Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> Say, God, you dwell among your saints, your praise with the seraphim of Christ, holy hymn, and glorified by the cherubim and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You brought all things out of the mountain. Let us pray. Let us be attentive. The Lord chastened and corrected me, but he did not give me up to death. Wisdom. The reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Let us be attentive. In those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. The, these they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hand, hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your the reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, 
let us be attentive. At that time, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to, Jesus, to Joseph. And he bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of a rock. And he rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they may go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man seated at the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Good morning. Please be seated and our church school students, please come to the front for your special message today. Morning, Christos Anesti. Christ is risen, and this is the day that the Lord has made. <coughs> There's a beautiful verse in the book of Psalms, Psalm 110:4, and it says, "You are a priest forever." So, my question for you today is: I have a lot of questions for you today, actually. This is kind of a Q&A section. I'm going to ask the questions and you're going to give the answers. So, how long, oh, I guess I should get a microphone if you're going to give answers. How long, yep, put this on here. Okay, when does forever end? When does forever end? Anybody know? Yes. Never? Never. Forever never ends. So in the book of Psalms, which is a quote that we use oftentimes for the priesthood in the Orthodox Church, if you are a priest forever, when do you stop being a priest? Never. Never, that's right. Okay. So that means that when you are a pri when you are ordained a priest in the Orthodox Church, are you a priest just for a while, just until you retire? Just until the bishop says you're done, what? How long? How long? Forever. For that forever, right? The end of your life, right? Yep. Totally. You are a priest forever. All right. What then are one of the main duties, or I'm going to say privileges and honors of the priesthood? We do things like, of course, 
baptisms and weddings and confession and lots of things around the church, right? Funerals, all of that. But what's the number one thing that you think of when it comes to the life of the priesthood that the priests only do? Well, the priests receive the ordination, but what do we do? What, what's one of the main things that we do as priests? We're kind of right here, right now. Communion. Communion, and in the, in the, it takes place in what service? Liturgy. The liturgy. So the divine liturgy is one of the main duties, responsibilities, and privileges of the priesthood. Now, when you get up in the morning to come to church, Jordan, what do you do? Wake up. You wake dressed. up. After you wake up, <laughs> by yourself, that's glad. I'm good. Your parents don't have to wake you up. Get dressed. You get dressed, and then? Eat breakfast. You, no, you come to church. No, right. That's, that's on every other day. On, on church days, you come to church. Right. Okay. So, gotcha. That's okay. That was a trick question. On Sundays, when a priest gets ready to do the liturgy, what does he do? On a Sunday morning, first thing. Jordan, you got the first thing. First thing is? Get dressed. Wake up. Oh, wake wake up. up. I'll give you give, I'll give you a second chance at that answer. Wake up. That's a very good one. You wake up, and we wake up really early. All right. Then what do we do? What do we do after we wake up? Just like you do. Just like you do. We do. We get. We get dressed. We get dressed, and we'll wash up, right? Because we want to be clean for the liturgy. And then, what what you get dressed in, is not what we get dressed in to do the liturgy, right? I mean, like, we do wear regular clothes to get to church. Well, our, our, our robe, whatever. But what do we put on when we get to church? The cape thing? The vestments. That's right. This is called a felonion. The cape thing is the felonion. This is the epigonation. This is the epetrichili. This is the orarion. These are the cuffs. Um, this is the cross. So all of these are parts of our vestments. Can you imagine what it would be if a priest just walked, walked in the front door of the church? Oh, good morning, let me stretch, let me just get ready, walk straight in, and there you go. How would you like that? Just a pair of like, black pants and a shirt? It'd be kind of strange, wouldn't it? Have you ever seen liturgy done like that? I have, I have not, that's right. All right, so we pray. We wash, because there's a special hand washing we do to get ready, so we're handling the holy gifts, and we vest and then we serve. That is one of the main things in the life of a priest. And how long are you a priest? Forever. Forever, all right. We just this week had a priest fall asleep in the Lord. What does that mean? That's a beautiful Christian expression, but what does it mean? He passed, he passed away, or he died. There's a lot of other expressions that you, you can use for that. Does anybody remember on the Saturday of Lazarus, Jesus used that expression? Jesus said, and then I come up there, we talked about it on Saturday of Lazarus, says to the disciples, they say to him, your friend Lazarus has died, he says, and he's, and he's only, he says, fallen asleep, right? And they say, well, if he's fallen asleep, he'll just wake up, right? And Jesus says, no, you don't get it. Lazarus has died. I'm glad you weren't, I wasn't there because this gives me an opportunity to show you the power and the glory of God. So we use that expression, falling asleep in the Lord, because it is our understanding as an Orthodox Christian that life is all of life. Life is what we experience right now. We're living, we're breathing, we're talking. We pass through death, but because Jesus conquered death, we pass to life after life. And that is what Jesus did with Lazarus, and that is what Jesus did with Adam and Eve, and that is the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right. When you said you're a priest forever, how long did you think that lasted? Did that last forever, like, until you die? Yeah, it lasts until you die. What about after you die? If there's life now, and if there's life after life, does that priesthood go with him? Mm -hmm. It does. So forever, when does forever end again? Everybody? Yeah. Never. All right. So then the question is, if there is an altar on this side of heaven, is there an altar on the other side of heaven? 
Yeah, it was called the heavenly altar. We call it that. Then, if you're a priest in this life and your place is here at the altar serving the liturgy, what's your place in the heavenly kingdom at the heavenly altar? What? Serving the heavenly liturgy. This is how we refer to it because you are a priest forever. All right. Remember what we do before we serve the liturgy. What do we do as priests? We wake up first, right? And, and we, get our, we get our vestments on, and we pray, and we wash ourselves, right? Well, what about a priest who is no longer able to do that for himself, who has, as we say, fallen asleep in the Lord, but is getting ready to serve at the heavenly liturgy, at the heavenly altar? Does he need to be vested? He does. And so what happens when a priest falls asleep in the Lord? Other priests gather around, and they do the washing, the dressing, and the prayers that he would normally do, because on the morning that he is buried, he is laid, and this will happen on Tuesday morning, he is laid here in a casket facing the altar, and one single priest serves the liturgy in his place, as a statement of our belief that he will be serving at the heavenly altar. But those priests that gather together, like the myrrh-bearing women, by the way, and Joseph, who took care of Jesus, this is why it's a perfect Sunday to talk about this, they came and they did what Jesus needed for his burial. The priests come and do what is needed for a priest's burial by one vestment at a time, putting his stikarion on, putting his epiprichilion on, putting his epigonation, his cuffs, his uh, felonion, his cross. And then, the last thing that we do is we place him in the casket. He's preparing to serve the liturgy. What do we need to serve the liturgy? What's one of the main things we do in the liturgy? We preach the gospel, right? So, one of the last things we do we take the gospel and we put it in his hands like this. And when people come by to say their farewells and offer their prayers for that priest who is now laying in his casket, what is he still presenting? The gospel of Jesus Christ, which is what his entire life was all about, preaching. So even after we are done with our last breath, in this life, we continue to preach about the good news of Jesus Christ as we hold the gospel and people come by, and our last witness to them as priests, even fallen asleep, is the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in which we have our hope. So, I wanted to let you know, because some of you will be coming perhaps to offer. His name was Father Sarandus Serviu. He served at St. Nicholas for many years, and he came to Holy Trinity in his later years after his retirement. But I wanted you to know how special that is for priests to do that for other priests, for faithful to come and venerate and still bear witness to the ministry that he has served for so many years and how we serve at the heavenly altar even on the other side of life. So God bless you all. Thank you for being good myrrh bearers and honoring those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. And may we all have the hope of the resurrection. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, and minister you, the King of glory to serve you as great and awesome even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all, and trusted us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. 
You alone, Lord our God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You are alone, O holy, and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best of the grace of Christ, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. God, come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from among your children. And make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer you these gifts for you, Christ, our God, of the offer and the offer. The one who receives and is distributed, and to you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the Christ only him to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Hallelujah. We mystically represent the cherubim sent the thrice holy hymn to the life giving trinity. Let us set aside all the cares of this life. That may receive the king of all of its place, glorified by the angelic hosts. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come, let us worship God, our king, and bow down before him. Death of Roskinisum and Kiprospesum, the priest of the Vasilik, the Amen. Worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy, my God, according to your mercy, according to the love of the mercy, blood of my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, if I acknowledge my sin. Yes, you, you only have my sins, and none of the disease in your sight, and desire to and I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear sounds of joy and gladness if you don't that you have broken me rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and bow me in your Create in me a clean heart of God and a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the earth of your salvation. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. The Lord shall open my lips and my eyes. God, remember those who love us and those who hate us. In peace, lift up your hands to the holy places and bless the Lord always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord ascends with a cry of command and with the shout of the trumpet of God.
Să vă pomenească Domnul Dumnezeu într-un părăția sa, totdeauna, acum și pururea și în vecii vecilor. Amin. May the Lord God remember us all in his kingdom, always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Let us an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Let us Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Let us Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the us and judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. Let us love one another that with oneness of mind we may confess. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and fortress. Christ is in our midst. 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 Christ is in our midst.
the doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God ineffable beyond comprehension invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy, and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, 
drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, and the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. The sacton son si prosperum en catapanda, que via panda. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts here presented, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me, O Theos, last to meet them off the local so may God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven and confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. And we offer you spiritual worship for those who close in the faith. For our fathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and saints. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Bishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, 
Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. From this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father in one, O in this Uranus, Ayastito Tonomasu, El Teto y Vasiliasu, Yanitito Totalimasu, O Senora Noque Epitisis, Donato in Monte Nebusion, Dossim in Simero, Giac Seminto Frio Daimon, Os que me safiam se leta simon, que me ensinem se mas aspiras mon, ala reisi mas na foto para o luxo. O ti isso é este universalia que é dinam este e doxa, tu vadros que tu eu que tu ai que o pneu me matos, nem que ai que este se onas to ne onon. Τάσια φαλάσι μόν το γιο κλινόμεν. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick position of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and thrust to all your people. God be merciful. Pros homen taia tisayis, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. Melis and desperate and I unite us for every year. Never can somebody sanctify us. Clear us from desperate to I unite us. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins, and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me. 
since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I should be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body in the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not view your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King and God. Resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We 
venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. Behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. For these of the Good morning. After our Paschal break, we are resuming our church school classes, so we ask you to please be mindful of our dismissal procedures. The chalice on this side first, only the staff, please, that they may go and receive first and go to their classes before the students arrive. Then all the students, please, through the center aisle, not the sides, through the center aisle, you'll be dismissed students first. After that, the parish council will return for a second pass, and then everyone else in the congregation who is an Orthodox Christian, who is properly <coughs> prepared to receive the holy gifts, may come forward. May God have mercy on us. Christos Anesti. With the fear of God, with faith, and with love, draw near.
God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving in us awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe. Through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification. To you we give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. For a Trisayon, uh, first of all, for Father Sarando Serviu, whose funeral will be on Tuesday, as is listed in the bulletin. Also, two years for his presbytera Nancy or Athanasia, and also just received notice of the repose of Vladimir Peregonchev, who is the father of Andrei Peregonchev, one of our parishioners. <laughs> Lasticas ton dulon su soter na pakson pilaton aptas istin makari en zoit imbarasit pilantrope. In your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also 
to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are our God, who descended into Hades, and loosened the pains of those who are chained. Grant rest also, Savior, to the souls of your servants. <laughs> Η μόνη αγνικιά χρυντος παρθένος, η Θεόνα φράσος κύσασα, πρέσβευε υπέρ του σωτήνε, ας τυχάς των δούλων σου. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great love, we pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for the repose of the souls of the departed servants of God, Sarandos, the priest, our brother and co-celebrant, Athanasia Presbytera, and Vladimir, who have fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of their sins, voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord grant that they, their soul, rest where the righteous repose. Let us ask Christ, our mortal King in our God, for the mercy of God, the kingdom of the heavens, and the forgiveness of their sins. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God, O spirits and of all flesh, you have troubled upon death and have abolished the power of the devil. Give it life to your word. Give rest to the soul of your departed servant. Saranda the priest, brother and co-celebrant, Athanasia Presbytera and Vladimir, in a place of light, in a place of repose, in a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, and suffering, as a good and loving God forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, and deed. For there is no one who lives and does not sin. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. What is see an asso ite makaria na pavsis ton kimenon dulon to theu sarando iereos adel puchis liturgui mon genomeno athanasia presbiteras ke tu dulu vladimiru christe o theos simon ke sitin doxan na pembomen sin don arcos o padrito panegio ke agathos o pios o pnevmati let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection of the life and the repose of your departed servants. Sarandos, the priest, our brother and celebrant, Athanasia Presbytera, and Vladimir, who have fallen asleep, Christ our God. And to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, life giving Spirit. Now and forever and to the ages of the ages. Eonias as in Nimi Axima Caristi, I am Nista the Fimon. Eonias as in Nimi Axima Caristi, I am Nista the Fimon. May your memory be eternal to your brothers and sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. Eonia.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. The servant of God is baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The servant of God receives the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. The servant of God, groom, is crowned as the servant of God, bride, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, O Christ our God, and to you we send up glory. As an Orthodox Christian priest, I, Father George, Father Radu, we have all had the blessing and divine honor to use each of these above phrases in baptizing, communing, marrying, and even burying members of this holy church. Regardless of age, sex, social status, wealth or poverty, or any other ranking, each child being baptized, person receiving communion, couple getting married, a person being laid to eternal rest are awarded the same title, Servants of God. What an honor that is. Even at ordination, when a faithful member of the church is elevated to the lofty degree of the priesthood, as it is called, after which certain honors are accorded, he is still referred to as before his ordination in the prayers following the actual ordination for the servant of God who has now been ordained a presbyter. Welcome to the Orthodox Church, my friends, where everyone who desires to follow Christ is simply a servant of God. Today on the second Sunday after Pascha, we celebrate and learn from the stories of two groups of people who from the time of Jesus were true models of what it means to be servants of God. The Merbarian women and the first deacons of the church. First, the deacons. As we hear in today's epistle from the Acts of the Apostles, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. What duty? The duty of serving. In this first organizational act, as it were, of the early church, most, the most important need to be filled was to find worthy people to serve the needs of the church and those whom the Lord had called them to serve. Then in the gospel, from which today the second Sunday of Pascha draws its name, the Sunday of the Mirror Bearers, we hear that Joseph of Arimathea bought a linen shroud, taking him down, wrapped Jesus in a linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. When you think about everything that was just said and the trauma in which it happened, that was a lot of work. And it was a work of true love, the work of a true servant. After that, following faithful Hebrew tradition, quote, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. These sacrificial offerings of love by Joseph and the women are not done out of compulsion, but out of a true spirit of serving by those who consider themselves to be servants of Christ. This was not just a passing fad shared only during the passion and the burial of Jesus by the followers. That kind of model is set by false leaders and cults of personality, and it usually dies with the leader. The title of being called a servant of God and the duties that go along with it were deeply embedded in the early church. Here are two examples from the epistles of the New Testament penned by the apostles. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ from Titus 1.1. And likewise, from James 1.1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where did they learn this idea of being servants of God? It was none other than, other than the command of Jesus himself, from Mark 9, 35. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be the last of all and the servant of all. But they also knew that Jesus 
taught by modeling his most important lessons. So he himself became the servant of all, as testified in the prayers of the service of baptism. You, being boundless without beginning and unutterable, came down on earth, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men. In other words, with Jesus, it was not just do as I say, it was do as I do. As successors to the early deacons of the church, of blessed Joseph of Arimathea, of the holy mirror bearers and the apostles themselves, God has given us both the invitation and the freedom to be his servants. You did not choose me, it says in John 15, but I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit. St. Peter encourages us to use that freedom to the glory of God who gave it to us to begin with. Live as people who are free, he says, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. St. Paul, however, reminds us that that is not always easy. It is not an easy thing to be known as a servant of God or to fulfill the responsibilities that go along with it. Not always. As servants of God, he says in 2 Corinthians 6, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, in sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness. He goes through a few other struggles and trials and then concludes, yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet present possessing everything. Even so, a 19th century pastoral guide encourages us to endure and remain faithful like the mirror-bearing women, faithful to the end. It says, by example of the holy women, we should also strengthen in our hearts the true self-denying love of our Savior. In other words, putting others first, putting Him first. Even the strength of our love for him should be like those, as the Holy Apostle says, so that nothing could separate us from him, neither things present nor things to come, neither life nor death nor angels nor men, as St. Paul lists in Romans 8. So what does all that mean to us today? How can we, as servants of God in the church, serve? There are many specific ways. I am looking out over a sea of faithful members of the family of Holy Trinity Church who do this over and over. But perhaps we need a reminder, perhaps we're kind of new to the community, perhaps we're just getting started, or perhaps we finally say to ourselves, today I want to commit. I am from here on in a servant of God. So there are three specific, there's a three-part model that has been laid out that can serve sort of as a groundwork for this life of continued service. One, identify a need. Two, think about how I can meet that need. And three, take action to address the need. So one, identify the need. This need is oftentimes proclaimed by the church and her various ministries. You see it in the Herald. You see it in the bulletin. You hear it in the announcements. You hear it at coffee hour. Someone taps you on the shoulder and they say, we have a need. That's the church calling you. Second, think about how I can meet that need. No that God has equipped you for something or for many things even. And three, take action, meaning don't just sit there. Don't leave it for someone or anyone. You know how that old saying goes. Take it upon yourself in humility and in faith to step forth and to take action. Identify, think, and act. It's a plan that really works. And it's a fascinating lesson that this is also the weekend on which our metropolis celebrates its annual St. Potios Awards Banquet. This year has took place yesterday, over 600 people up in Cranberry, where two faithful members of our church, and they are here today, faithful as always, Jim Balouris and Marianne Stearns, were honored with dozens of others from throughout the metropolis. The many awardees varied greatly in age, in talents, and in gifts, but they were all honored for one thing, being faithful servants of God. And down to the last person, including our two, none of them did it for the honor 
none of them did it for the award. Their honor, as should be ours, is the honor of bearing one of the greatest titles we could ever desire, that of being servants of God. So I close today with the words of a late 19th century priest who ponders, what should you do? What is there for you to do? Oh, he says, do everything in the name of Jesus Christ, for his sake and for the benefit of others, for the salvation of your neighbors, and then every deed, like fragrant ointment, there's the tie-in for today, ointment, mirror bearing, will delight you and please you in this life, and you will learn things for yourself and leave a good memory for yourself, one that is eternal. May that memory for each of us, regardless of where our life has taken us and what we have achieved in any other place, may, dear friends, that memory be that we were a true servant of God. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ our God, and a hope glory to you. May Christ our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of Saint Joseph of Arimathea, and the holy myrrh-bearing women, Saint Argyra the new martyr, Clement the hymnographer, Erkanwad the bishop, and Yaakovos the apostle and brother of Saint John the theologian, whose memories we celebrate this day, and of all the saints, Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Truly he is risen. Christos Anviat. Adavrat Anviat. Christos Vos Cres. Vois the Novos Cresni. Al Masia come. Ahem come. Glory to his third day resurrection. We venerate his third day resurrection. Christ is risen from the dead by death, trampling down upon death. And to those in the tombs he has granted life. Truly the Lord is risen. Christos anesti ek nekron. Thanato, thanaton patisas. of the risen Lord be with you all. Amen. Please be Amen. seated. Sure. Sure. One second. I'm going to get a picture of the previous. This is uh, Father George's last Sunday here before he departs for Greece for the summer, so I wanted to get a nice photo of the three of us with our Anastasi candles, if you don't mind. Thank you. And Father George, we thank you for all your service to this community. We wish you safe travels, a blessed summer in that sanctified land of Greece, and we look forward to having you back with us in the fall. And Presbytera as well. You always.
serving the altar, I feel a call. I feel that I continue the order of the priesthood. As Father, a few days ago, I think it was last Sunday, he gave me a pin that I am a priest in the order of Melchizedek. I'm a priest now that I am still alive, and I will be a priest afterwards, not only in heaven, but on earth, hopefully and prayerfully, through the faith of our family, being the example of a good servant. Thank you. Amen. Please rise and let's offer Father George our well wishes and presbytera for the summer. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many, 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 many years. Don't blame me. I learned it from you how to do this. <laughs> Please be seated. Our parish council is going to pass the offering tray. We have just a few announcements. And then please remember, we have shortly our parish assembly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like to welcome uh, visitors, at least the ones I received, although I think there are more than this today. Uh, Thomas Dean, welcome wherever you are. Thomas, there you are, welcome. Ah, somehow Thomas got in without a yellow cross. We should make sure he has one of those for uh, our hospitality hour today. Please join us in it. Also, uh, Trent Smith. Trent, where are you today? Trent, excellent. And, Tom, and Trent does have one. So welcome. Nice to have you with our community. Trent has recently moved in the area. Nice to have you both with us today. Please join us for hospitality hour and uh, let our community have the opportunity to welcome you. As I have mentioned uh, in the young people's message today and also for that Trisayun, Father Saranda Serviu has fallen asleep in the Lord and the schedule of the visitation and funeral is in the bulletin today. Visitation tomorrow 2 to 8 with the Trisayun at 7. On Tuesday morning the Divine Liturgy at 9 followed by the funeral at 11 o'clock and the Macaria is being hosted here by Holy Trinity Church and we are glad and honored to be able to offer that for the memory and honor of Father Sarandos. Uh, because of that, the journey to fullness, which was scheduled to start tomorrow, has actually been rescheduled to start next week, so please be aware of that. Tuesday, we have the journey of marriage, and on Wednesday, Thursday, we have prayer in Panera at 7 a.m. for any of the men that would like to join us at 7 for brief prayer and uh, great discussions that we have. There is the General Assembly today. We uh, ask you to please remain. We do need a quorum to accomplish that, and thank God we normally do get that, but we'll grab some hospitality hour treats and then head into the grand room and uh, please sign in on the way in as soon as we reach 30 we can begin it is simply a regular spring assembly but is one of those things that as servants of God it is your opportunity to serve the church by helping us move forward with the day-to-day um, -day affairs and management of the church festival cooking please note again because of the funeral um, the start time for Tuesday's baklava cooking is changed from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So it's just going to be a half day from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So please uh, take note of that. And also there's a bereavement ministry meeting tomorrow at 7. Other than that, please read the announcements in the bulletin. Welcome. Good to have you all here. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. We hope to see many of you for the visitation and funeral. Thank you.